Well, this presentation examines the birthday problem, a common type of problem that is studied in probability. And here is a version of the problem. If 12 people are in a room, what is the probability that at least two people share a birthday? If that's the case, A is the event that at least two people share a birthday. But that's going to be difficult for us to determine. So instead we look at the complement of A, and that is that no two people share a birthday. That's going to be easier for us to determine the probability. So the complement of A means that all of the birthdays are different. And so what we're looking for is we're looking for the probability that with 12 different people, we get 12 different birthdays. That's the direction we're going to go with this. So probability of A complement, all birthdays are different. So we want all people to have different birthdays. So in a sense, the first person can have any one of 365 birthdays, and we're still in the game. But the second person cannot match the first person. So the second person only has 364 out of 365 choices. So now we have two birthdays used. The third person now only has 363 choices, because cannot match the first, cannot match the second. The fourth person has 362, cannot match the first three. So that's how those probabilities are going to be established. And if we want the probability that all birthdays are different, again, we have 12 people, 365 out of 365, 364 out of 365, 363 out of 365, 362 out of 365, 361 out of 365, 360 out of 365, etc. So the 12th person has 11 bad birthdays, cannot match any of the first 11. 11 bad birthdays, so he has 354 good birthdays out of 365. So we need to multiply all those numbers together. And to help me with this, I'm going to actually go ahead and use Excel to multiply those numbers together. That's going to be relatively easy. Uh, certainly you can do this on a handheld calculator, but it's going to be a somewhat tedious computation. So pulling up Excel, we have 12 people. So I will Uh, this is going to correspond to the numerators, so the first numerator is 365, then 364, then 363, moving its way down to the 12th person, and the denominators are all 365, so we'll autofill those. And then here will be our probability. So we're going to take equals this number, 365, divided by this number. So, of course, that first person has a probability of 1. And then we're going to autofill all of these. So this number represents the fraction 365 over 365. This is 364 over 365, 363 over 365, etc. And we want to multiply these 12 numbers. If you're going to multiply 12 numbers, the command on Excel is equals product. So we're going to type equals product, and we're going to highlight those 12 numbers. So equals product, and in this case it's D1 to D12. And this will give us a number, and we have 83297, 833. So that's 365 over 365 times 364 over 365, etc. is about 0.833. So that's the probability that all the birthdays are different. And we want the probability that there's at least one birthday match or that two people share a birthday. This is a complement. What we want is at least two share a birthday. So in other words, not all birthday different. So at least one birthday match is 1 minus the probability that all birthdays are different. We saw in the last slide that all birthdays are different is 0.833. So at least one birthday match's probability is 1 minus 0.833 or 0 0.1670. So in a room with 12 people, the probability is about 0.167 that at least two people will have the same birthday. So, you know, about 1 in 6 is the likelihood of having a birthday match if we have a room of 12 people. So let's take a look at this question. How many people must be in a room so that the probability of a birthday match is at least 0.50? So 
So our goal is to find the number such that the probability that all birthdays are different is less than 0.50. So let's come over here and extend this to 20 maybe. So now we have 20 people in a room. We're going to need to have 20 numerators. Twenty denominators. Get rid of that. And then twenty fractions. So the question is, is this what we're looking for? And again to remind you, we are looking for the probability that all birthdays are different is less than 0.5. So the number we want is going to be less than 0.5. So if we multiply all those numbers together, I'll do the product over here. equals product is this number less than 0.5 now we're at 0.588 so the probability that all birthdays are different here is about 59 percent so the probability of at least one match is about 41 percent so let's extend all of these a couple more places so if we go to 22 equals product for all of these numbers and I have 52 percent again that means the probability of at least one match is 1 minus 52 percent or 48 percent so let's extend this one more and let's see what happens there so we're now at 23 equals product so what's the probability they're all different with 23 birthdays and there we go now it's under 50 percent so for 23 people the probability of all different is under 50 percent 49 percent so the probability of at least one match one minus 49 percent or about 51 percent so if 23 people are in a room the probability that there is at least one birthday match is indeed more than 50 percent about 51 percent Okay, here's another similar type of problem, the elevator problem. A hotel has 10 floors with guest rooms. Six guests enter the lobby elevator. Assuming they exit randomly, what is the probability that no two people exit on the same floor? So we want all of our guests to exit on different floors. We have six guests. We have 10 floors to choose from. The first guest can exit on any of the 10 floors, so he has 10 out of 10 options. The second person must exit on a different floor than the first person, so he has 9 out of 10 options. The third person, of course, cannot match either of the first two, so he has 8 out of 10 options. So the probability they all go on different floors would be first person 10 out of 10, second person 9 out of 10, third person 8 out of 10, fourth person 7 out of 10, fifth person 6 out of 10, sixth person 5 out of 10. So we can again go to Excel so we have a total of six people the numerator here 10 out of 10 9 out of 10 8 out of 10 7 out of 10 6 out of 10 5 out of 10 those are the numerators the denominators out of 10 all out of 10 so we want to see what those fractions are so equals this guy divided by this guy and we'll scroll all those down and we want equals the product of all those numbers and what do we get 0 0.1512 so the probability they all land on different floors is 0 0.1512 so we're going to ask one last question. Probability at least two people exit on the same floor, which will be 1 minus the probability they all exit on different floors, 1 minus 0.1512, which is 0.8488.